I'm really excited to be speaking about this topic because everybody's working. We're all working. Wherever we are, we're working. Whether we're at home and we're on our laptops, whether we're on our phones, we're busy working. Uh, work is just part of our lives today. And the challenge with all of this work is that we very seldom think about the organ that is actually doing all the work. So we may all be thought workers and you know, knowledge workers, as we called, and we do an enormous amount of thinking between our ears. And our brain, our brain is the greediest organ that we own. It's only 2% of body weight, but it uses upwards of 25% of the energy that we consume from the food that we eat. That's an enormous percentage. And if we are stressed, it uses up more energy because it has to make energy to deal with a stress response. And most people would agree that work today has become quite stressful because we're busy juggling all sorts of ideas and concepts and projects and plans in our head all the time. So I need to speak about this energy that is used by the brain on an ongoing basis because when we manage the energy really well, we end up thinking better. We end up being able to focus. We end up being able to concentrate. Our learning, therefore, improves, and so does our memory. And as a wonderful side benefit, so does our mood, and our weight becomes stable as well. So the energy balance in the body is pretty carefully calibrated. But because we live in such a busy, stressful world, the challenge that we now have is to manage that energy really well, specifically in the brain. And one of the reasons that anxiety and depression and burnout is so prolific today is because people are really not very good at managing their energy. So we push through feeling tired. We push through feeling as if we need a rest, and we don't go for the walk or go to the gym like we need to because there's some other project we need to do. So it's important to discuss something that I, that, that I like to call is the blood glucose roller coaster. Now, our blood glucose is what supplies our brain with energy. We get the energy in the blood that moves up into the brain, and we've got about a a quarter of a, a liter of blood circulating in our brain every minute. And that's an enormous amount <laughs> of blood. And it's carrying oxygen, and it's carrying nutrients, and it's carrying energy. And that energy needs to be converted into usable energy in what we call mitochondria within all our neurons. And we've got about 80, 83 to 86 billion neurons. And uh, researchers argue about the specific number, but you don't need to, because all you need to know is that each of those billions of neurons contain thousands, if not tens of thousands, of mitochondria, which are producing energy all the time. And when our blood glucose is unstable, which happens for a number of different reasons, we don't get consistent, stable energy supply. And the thing that happens in the brain, it runs out of energy because it has nowhere to store energy. So if you've got a lot of deadlines, a lot of projects you're working with, a lot of ideas, you're busy talking to people, you're using up an enormous amount of energy. And what happens is that your brain runs out of energy. So what happens to most people, they find by mid-afternoon, they can no longer focus and concentrate really well. They're thinking of ideas and they're losing the, the track of their thoughts. They're unable to make good decisions. And this is just because the brain is running out of energy, particularly the prefrontal cortex, which is the greediest part of an already very greedy brain. So how do we handle this in relation to, to work? Well, there are a few pointers that I've got for you, and then we'll, we'll take some questions from the audience, because I really want you to be able to take away some actionable steps in how to deal with this, this energy. Let's just focus on this, this blood glucose roller coaster for a moment and in relation to stress. Just imagine you're walking through the jungle, and it's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, and you're having a wonderful amble through the jungle. But suddenly, you hear a rustle in the bush. And before you can think, you start running. And this is important to keep in mind because emotion travels a lot faster in the brain than thinking does. And it has to, because otherwise we'd be wondering about the tiger and not escaping the tiger. We run, we get away from the tiger, and we don't need to feel the stress response anymore. But what has happened in our body affects the brain. Because in able to run away from that tiger really, really quickly, what the body does, it flushes our muscles with glucose to give those muscles energy to either fight or run really quickly. And then what happens is our blood glucose dips because of the adrenaline. And then what happens? We feel a little bit shaky, 
And what a lot of people do, they either reach for a coffee or they reach for a donut or they reach for a chocolate to get their blood glucose up again. But with those kinds of foods, it dips very quickly again. And before very long, a couple of minutes, maybe if you're really lucky, you get half an hour, what you need is another pickup. You need another boost of glucose to keep your brain going. Now, something very interesting happens in the body in relation to this up and down. The more times your blood glucose goes up and down, the greater the chances are that any excess carbohydrates you eat will be stored as fat. Any excess carbs will be stored as fat if your blood glucose goes up and down on an ongoing basis. So people can end up putting on weight because of stress. If they're continuously running away from the tiger in our heads today, what happens is that their blood glucose goes up and down on an ongoing basis and they start noticing that they particularly put on weight around their middle section. And this happens because we've got four times more cortisol receptors, that is, cortisol stress hormone receptors in our deep abdominal fat than anywhere else in our body. So it's as if our middle section becomes a magnet for that fat. And guess what happens? This affects our focus, concentration, memory, learning, and mood again. So we end up on this vicious cycle. So a very important point is to keep your blood glucose stable. So three pointers in relation to this and specifically related to work. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to have a look at how many tabs you've got open on your laptop, if you've got your laptop with you. Each one of those tabs is taking up neural energy. Because every time you look at the tab and decide whether you need it or not, or every time you add a new tab, what happens is that you are sending a little bit of glucose out there for your brain to figure out, you're making a choice about whether you're going to open it, what new tab you're going to add to. So the more tabs you've got on your computer, there's a greater chance that you've got less energy to be able to address the things that you need to address. So that's the one thing. So make a point from today. Make a little sticky note somewhere and tell yourself, I'm going to unsubscribe from any email that doesn't bring me true value that I use or bring me joy. We need more joy. We need more laughter. So what I do personally, I unsubscribe regularly. If I look at an email and I don't want to open it and I'm definitely not interested in saving it, delete, unsubscribe, gone. I'm giving myself some neural energy when I do that. I'm choosing a boundary for where I'm spending my time. The second pointer I'd like to give you is leave some crumbs. Now this is a very odd thing to do because it goes against what the human brain wants to do. But in today's world, we have to change the way we do things because of the kind of work that we do. We, we do work that really never ends. So what I mean when I say leave some crumbs is that when you come to the end of the day, most of us want to tick the box that we've finished something that we're busy doing. But the research shows that if you leave five or ten minutes work on the project that you're busy with, these are the crumbs, the next day you start the work that you need to do immediately. You don't sit and procrastinate anymore because guess what? You've got a task to finish and immediately your cognitive momentum kicks in and you finish that task and so it's easier to move on to the next task. Now as I said, I know that this goes against what we want to do. We all want to finish the project, finish the email that we're busy composing, finish that article we're writing. Don't do that. Try this for a few days and Tell me how it goes. And I've done this and I know that it works because I immediately get into the task at hand when I get to my desk the next morning and I feel a sense of accomplishment. And guess what that does? That gives us a little boost of dopamine, which keeps us motivated because dopamine is the pleasure and motivation neurotransmitter. And guess what? We get easily into the next task. So I want you to keep some crumbs from one day to the next so it makes it easier for you to jump into your work. You see, you don't have to use so much neural energy then to force yourself to start a new task. You've already got that momentum going. And the third thing that I want you to do, I want you to think very carefully about what you're consuming during the day that is making your blood glucose go up very quickly and then dropping down. And I want you to make it harder for yourself to get to those foods. So don't have them in your desk drawer. Don't even have them in your fridge. Have them in the store down the road and focus on eating something that will give you that consistent, stable energy supply. Because when you've got that stable energy supply for your brain, everything becomes easier. You make better decisions. 
And I know that I dived into that deeply yesterday, but when you make better decisions, guess what happens? Everything else becomes easier. So a lot relies on us making sure that our neural energy is stable. Unsubscribe from anything that doesn't give you real value that you're going to use and bring you joy and leave crumbs for the next day. So I'll leave you with those thoughts, and if anybody has any questions, please ask them. Delia, that was great. Three things, crumbs, tabs, and consumption. Perfect. And they're all actionable, so that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Any questions from the group online? Yes. So, yeah, so you're asking what kinds of foods should you stay away from? Okay. Great question. The kinds of foods we need to stay away from are ultra-processed foods. So this is anything that's been into a factory and that has been manipulated and changed in structure. We are an ancient organism with an ancient brain trying to cope in a very modern, chaotic, overwhelming, uncertain world, and we rely on a lot of nutrient-dense foods. Ultra-processed foods are produced so that the people that produce them make vast quantities of money. The challenge is our taste buds get used to them, and this changes our palate. And especially when children are brought up eating ultra-processed foods, they get used to that taste. But the good news is you can change your taste buds, and it only takes about 60 days, give or take, for you to change your taste buds. But the secret is, and this is an important secret, make sure that the foods that you eat contain good fat. And why? Good fat helps flavor molecules disperse in your mouth much more effectively than water does. So when you eat food with good fat, your taste buds register the flavor much more effectively. So don't eat dry foods that are supposed to be healthy for you, like dry rice cakes, whoever thought about that, or kale leaves, or plain carrot sticks. Make sure that you have great crunchy veggies with beautiful, rich hummus, for example. Have a pear with some macadamia or almond nut butter. Have some goji berries with some macadamia nuts or pecans or even almonds, which are prolific in the Mediterranean area. Use a lot of olive oil on your veggies. Put chili and garlic and ginger and coriander and basil. Mix that as a salad dressing. Put some miso with it for your gut health. Make it easy for yourself by making the food taste delicious because nobody wants to be deprived. The brain doesn't like deprivation. The minute it feels deprived, it won't stick to a change. But the good fat is the secret to make the flavor molecules burst in your mouth. Any other questions? Steve. Uh, sorry, I was late. That's all good. Uh, I love what I heard, um, uh, and I'm excited about it, particularly about the work practices. Um, I was wondering, um, you've sort of given this advice to us as individuals, but I'm wondering, could you make a leap to what would, it, what would workplaces look like if those work practices were widespread throughout the organization? I, I sense they're not widespread now. How would, how would the workplace be different? Well, there are a number of ways. I love this question. There are a number of ways the workplace will be better. The one thing that's going to happen is people are going to be able to focus and concentrate better. And when you've got brains that are focusing and concentrating, making change is a lot easier. You see, what a lot of people don't realize is that if you want to change behavior and you want to get people to have new habits, you have to have a brain that's functioning really well because you need neurons to connect optimally. And they don't connect optim optimally when the brain is malnourished. So that's the first thing, focus and concentration. And then people learn and they retain the memories better. The other really funny side benefit is that people actually end up being in better mood. They're just in a better mood because blood glucose keeps your mood stable when it is stable. And we all know that working with cranky team members makes everybody cranky. So that's an important point. But we also know that productivity goes up. Because when people aren't distracted by being hungry, by being cranky, by not being able to focus, by being easily distracted, which is also what happens when the brain is malnourished, their productivity goes up naturally. So there are a number of benefits that happen in the workplace because of that. And of course, the other added benefit is that when you're eating this way, you also just happen to be supporting your immune system. So guess what happens there? You are more healthy. You don't get sick as quickly. And that is what we all want, especially after the disaster that has been the pandemic. So having a robust immune system also supports optimum work 
um, and engagement. The other thing that research has showed is that this kind of protocol in relation to eating well also supports emotional equilibrium. And I understand how that happens from a neuronal perspective, and I won't go into that because we don't have time. But what happens is that your mood becomes more stable because you're handling stress more effectively. And when your mood is more stable, you're not suffering from things like anxiety and depression, and even um, things like PTSD can be ameliorated with this process. And then what happens is that people work more efficiently. So we know from research that that is exactly what happens. People are more productive when their mood is more stable. And I think that, you know, you don't just keep those benefits at work. You take those benefits home. So it's not as if you're just making sure that your workforce and your team work, work really well. You're making sure that people take that home. And as I said yesterday in my 20-minute section, um, my session, you know, when our brains are functioning well, we can have a robust brain health and cognition across our lifetime. And that is a wonderful gift to give to the people that work on your team, to have leaders experience, and for you to personally experience. I think we should all have this benefit. And the, the, side, the side benefit is that companies benefit in a number of ways, as mentioned. Thanks, that was a great question. Hey, Doc McCabe, I want to build on what Steve just brought up there. Uh, leave some crumbs behind. We have a mantra that we usually push around, and that is stop starting, start finishing. And then as a parent, we try to get our kids to finish their homework on time. So we have this system that's driving behaviors that may be counter to what you just shared with us. And I, want to, I just want to give you the opportunity to go back and explain that, uh, leave some crumbs behind if you don't mind. With absolute pleasure. I think it may be a little bit different for children at school and the way we work today in the workplace. I think one of the challenges is that um, we are working on a lot of different projects at the same time. And that leaves us feeling distracted from a cognitive perspective. And then what happens the next day when we get to work, a lot of us feel a little bit of an emotional dip, and we feel we have to now force ourselves. And someone said yesterday that um, procrastination is actually an emotion problem, and that is really true, because what happens is we have that dip, and so we check our WhatsApp, and we'll maybe check our email a bit more, and we don't get stuck into that task. And that's just because of the amount of work that we have to do today. So this may be specifically aimed at people at work. So that's in relation to that question. But as far as school children go, you can say to them, finish all the tasks that you need to finish for your homework now. But if you need to do some reading for school, maybe do that. Maybe get up a little earlier and do that before breakfast. We need to try and get the next generation to understand that we have to use our brain in the best way our brain functions, not in the way the system tells us the brain works. The system that has been set up, we can see that it doesn't work for good mental health. We can see that with the vast challenges with mental health we have on the planet today. So get them to finish the task that they need to finish for the next day, but just do something extra the next morning. Those crumbs are really important from a cognitive perspective. We don't need to be battling with procrastination as well as the huge onslaught of information that we have. We need to manage our brains. And as I said in my 60-minute session yesterday, think about how you're thinking. Think about when you're most effective at that at at the task that you're doing. Make big decisions in the morning, not in the afternoon. Think about how you're thinking, and think about how you think at work. And we all work, and we all want to work really effectively, but we also want to thrive as human beings. So let's aim to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was great. And thank you. Thank you.